Well, hey guys, it seems as though I'm expected to be reviewing Fenty skincare, so here you have it. Looks as though we've got a skincare line from a celebrity. Wow, never heard of that before. Um, yeah, Rihanna has a skincare line. I think they had like an early access, of course, for VIPs or something yesterday. That's a trend, you know, get on an email list, be the first to buy something. It's like, really? I mean, come on, your launch was yesterday. Let's just be honest. The featured ingredients is acerola cherry, which is from Barbados, like Rihanna. So it's kind of marketing to pull at your heartstrings that you form this connection between the product and Rihanna, like, you know, somehow putting detergent on your face, you know, makes you a celebrity. But nonetheless, Acerola Cherry, you'll find it in a lot of skincare products. It's not bad, it's rich in antioxidants, has some anti-inflammatory properties. Um, it's in Pharmacy Beauty's uh, Berry Cherry Bright Serum. Uh, product number one, Total Cleanser. <laughs> $25 for a face wash. The surfactant is sodium cocoyl glycinate. This is a cleansing agent with a mild foaming action. It tends to be gentle, not too drying. Logical ingredient in a face wash. Um, in addition to the cherry, they have a variety of other botanic in extracts in this. Tea, which is anti-inflammatory. Um, fig fruit extract. Let's hope they remove the furocoumarins from that so we don't develop a phytodermatitis. Uh, you, you guys know that limes and lemons, citrus fruits, uh, they have compounds called furocoumarins that if you get them on your skin, you go out in the sun, they can, you can develop a really bad photodermatitis. Figs also have those same compounds. Uh, so whenever I see a lime or lemon or fig and stuff, I always raise an eyebrow, but I do, I realize that uh, manufacturers remove that, but yeah. Um, people always getting excited about things like fig and lemon and lime, like manufacturers touting those ingredients. It's like, well, actually those things can often be bad for your skin. Uh, and of course this product, like all of the products in this line has fragrance and red dyes. Fragrance is less of a problem in face washes and things that you don't leave on the skin, but if you are um, allergic to it, you obviously have to avoid this and everything else in this line. Um, and then red dyes can cause irritation for people as well, and uh, in some cases, have been associated with exacerbation of acne, which is not ideal. Yeah, that's that's your $25 cleanser right there. I mean, is it worth it? Like, yeah, I mean, face wash is face wash. They can be drying. The more often you use face wash, the more likely they are to dry out your skin. A product like this is still going to be tough to use to remove water-resistant sunscreen and makeup, that's your fact out. You're gonna have to rub the skin quite a bit. That can be irritating. It, it just requires more effort. In my opinion, it's better to use a cleansing oil first to break up those water resistant films and then follow it up with a gentle cleanser. And you could consider using this uh, as, your, as your second cleanser. What I'm getting at here though is uh, this cleanser you're gonna have to work with it a little bit to, to remove cosmetics and water resistant long wear foundations and things like that at the end of the day. So that's what I can tell you guys about that. Product number two is the Fat Water Pore Refining Toner. Toners are some of the most antiquated things out there. I mean, they should be obsolete at this point. They were originally created to balance out the pH of the skin as a result of the harsh soaps that we once had to use, made out of things like lye that were really high pH and destroyed our skin. But soap and cleanser manufacturing has come a long way. So toners are like largely obsolete. Witch hazel has uh, astringent properties. It can help remove oiliness, but it can actually be very drying and irritating to a lot of skin types. So, you know, don't, be misled into thinking that because it's natural, it's safe or anything. I do have a video on witch hazel where I go into more detail, but it's one of those things that a lot of people with oily skin, they enjoy using it because it kind of has a degreasing effect. The toner also has niacinamide in it. I need a sip of tea here. <sighs> got Totoro back in action. Anyways, yeah, niacinamide, a B vitamin, I've got tons of videos on, that's anti-inflammatory, can help brighten up dark spots and hyperpigmentation, and can reduce oiliness. So this is a logical ingredient to include in a product like this that is aimed at, uh, that's aimed at 
a variety of things, brightening up dark spots and controlling oiliness. So that's great. Um, it's a leave on product. So the presence of, fr of fragrance in this and the red dyes are more likely to cause issue for people. Even if you're not sensitive to that, to them, uh, they're still more likely to cause issue when you leave them on the skin. And then you're, you're adding insult to injury. If you use all three of these products, you're getting like cumulative exposure to fragrance. Fragrance compounds are like thousands and thousands of them. They are very low molecular weight. They penetrate the skin very easily and they can interact with proteins in your skin and they, stimulate the innate immune response and then you mount a sensitivity to it. You're more likely to develop this with using the products and using a lot of them and to areas of your skin that happen to be maybe too dry, you're experiencing some irritation. These are all scenarios that likely will occur in your lifetime where fragrance can can cause an issue even if you don't have an issue with it today. Beyond that, you know, fragrance also causes irritant contact dermatitis, contact urticaria, pigmented dermatoses, phytodermatoses. Yeah, when people say, if you're not sensitive to fragrance, you might like this. Really what they should say is, if you're not sensitive to fragrance, but are open to accepting the risk of developing uh, contact sensitization, irritant contact dermatitis, contact urticaria, pigmented dermatoses, phytodermatoses, yeah, if you're okay with those risks, then yeah, go ahead and use the product. Um, what I'm getting at here is just because you don't have a problem with it doesn't mean one won't occur. And fragrance is the ingredient in skincare products most commonly associated with problems. So, you know, yeah, you may not have a problem with it, but it, it just baffles me that manufacturers continue to put it in stuff because when people come to the dermatologist with a problem to their skincare products, it's most likely due to fragrance. So it's like, why are you putting it in there just to make the stuff smell good? I, yeah, I don't know. And it's gonna be more of an issue when you're leaving it on the skin as you would in a toner. This also has a Japanese raisin tree. Now, if you go to a dermatologist with any skin condition and they offer you a raisin tree, just walk out the door. Uh, raisin tree has not been shown to be helpful for anything, uh, you know. Again, it's kind of pulling at your heartstrings to form some kind of connection that you're using some ingredient that, you know, maybe was used in Japan eons ago, or maybe traditionally still is used, but it's really not evidence-based for treating any kind of skin issue. Or, and then Australian lemon myrtle. Now, Australian lemon myrtle is an essential oil that actually has been shown to be helpful for treating molluscum. Uh, you're being like, oh my God, why did I come here? I just want to know if this is good or not. Yeah, molluscum are these annoying little bumps that young children get. Adults can get them as well. They're kind of, they're, they're almost kind of like a wart, but they're not. Uh, they're due to a little virus that gets into cracks in the skin. They make these little weird bumps on your skin. And the problem is they be can become itchy, children scratch, and then they introduce that little virus into other areas of the skin nearby so they get more of the bumps. They, they, they go away on their own, but they're a parent's worst nightmare because the kid keeps scratching them, you know, keeps getting more. And so in order to get rid of them faster, there are a variety of treatments that basically cause a lot of irritation to the individual bumps begging the immune system to come in and wipe away the virus. And Australian lemon myrtle actually has been shown to, to do that. Basically what, what happens with it is that it causes an irritant contact dermatitis uh, that's so you know, annoying that your immune system accidentally gets rid of the molluscum. Unless you have molluscum all over your face, I don't think you wanna put this on your skin. I would not have been my first choice as an ingredient in, in skincare products. The next product is the Hydrovisor, a $35 chemical sunscreen. That's pretty steep in my opinion for an American chemical sunscreen. And I say that because in the, in the United States, we we don't have as many filters that we can use for chemical sunscreens. So we really just can't make chemical sunscreens that are that great. And you know, companies like L'Oreal and Johnson & Johnson, they do a lot of work to stabilize avobenzone. Avobenzone is the active ingredient that blocks those rays that penetrate really deeply, destroy collagen, age your skin. And in the case of people with deeper skin tones can play a major, they, they play a major role in, UVA plays a major role in hyperpigmentation as as well. Um, yeah, we've got avabenzone in our chemical sunscreens. That's it. That's all we have to protect us against those rays. And it's not particularly stable. It degrades 
And manufacturers like L'Oreal, Johnson & Johnson, they've done a lot of work uh, on their sunscreens to stabilize avobenzone. I, I'm not sure, you know, who Fenty Beauty is, is using to source their ingredients or whatnot, if it's stabilized or not. That's not disclosed anywhere. So the UVA protection from the sunscreen could just be, you know, waning. Uh, is what I'm getting at. Uh, and then it's got some filters for UVB. And of course they left out the common irritating ones, oxybenzone. I think they also left out um, um, octinoxate. You know, they've gotta be coral reef friendly or whatever. I've gotta tell you guys, you know, the coral reef thing, it's mostly stuff that has been shown in lab studies where they look at coral reef like larvae and they put a ton of sunscreen in the dish. And of course it's like harmful to the reef, but whether or not that actually translates into, into these ingredients being responsible for harm to the actual coral reef, I don't know. I don't think we have an answer to that yet. And a lot of environmental scientists will argue that really the the problems with the health of the coral reef were largely attributed to warming of the ocean. That has nothing to do with sunscreen. Um, but it's it's a big marketing push. You know, people want oxybenzone free sunscreens. And I gotta tell you guys, oxybenzone is not, is not a chemical filter that I, you know, I would not be sad to see it go away. It's It, it can be irritating and, and whatnot, so fine. And it's got fragrance. Fragrance is definitely more of a problem in a leave-on product that is a sunscreen. Remember, I told you fragrance can cause photodermatitis. Um, fragrance compounds that can oxidize and cause more irritation. And these things are more likely in a product that's intended to be used when you are having sun exposure. So yeah, I don't love that about it. Um, what else? It's got Buchu. <laughs> I actually looked this up because I was like, what is Buchu or Barisum bet alina? <clears throat> this is a plant that is rich in flavonoids. You know, flavonoids are antioxidants. They can scavenge free radicals, theoretically. Although in skincare products, they're really not that stable. So whether or not they do that, <sighs> It's always hard to say. And companies will claim that their products are rich in antioxidants and all this other stuff. But they're not gonna go to lengths to show a biologic endpoint in terms of these antioxidants of like, does this impact the number of sunburn cells in the skin using our product with this antioxidant versus using our product without the antioxidant? No, they're not gonna do that. They're just gonna put it in there and claim that it does that. <laughs> <laughs> so that you might buy it. I don't know. Overall, this product line is not something I would encourage you guys to buy because to me it's a dime a dozen fragrance containing products, the majority of what you didn't need in the beginning. And then of course there is a lot more marketing verbiage around this line, like that they're environmentally conscious. You know, they also have gender neutral packaging. Their formulation is vegan, cruelty-free, all of these things that, you know, try and tie into what the consumer wants to hear. Um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the product itself is any good. I mean, in my opinion, in my unpopular opinion, if you want to call yourself environmentally conscious, don't make a skincare line because the whole, the whole way skincare lines exist and people have skincare companies is to make products that people buy and they have to continue to pump out new exciting products, you know, and this leads to a lot of waste. No matter how sleek the package is and the lack and dearth of bubble wrap, if you want to call yourself environmentally conscious, don't come out with a skincare line. It's like, you know, the, there's just so, there's so many products on the market, carbon copies of this or some variation on this. It's like, why do we need more? Even though there's no bubble wrap, it's still probably not the best thing for our environment. That's what I can tell you guys about Fenty skincare. I, you know, no, I don't think this is worth it. Don't, don't drop everything and buy this. Uh, products, they're not too expensive, certainly, but they're, they're not offering anything unique, in my opinion, and they all have fragrance, which I don't recommend. Even if you're not sensitive to it, even if you're willing to accept the risks, uh, you know, it's the most common reason for people to develop a problem to their products. But yeah, I mean, if you're comfortable with that, uh, give it a try -Z. 
But spending $35 on an American chemical sunscreen, you guys, I mean, my job here with this channel is to help you to wise up to that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't waste money on that, particularly since it has fragrance, which even if you're okay with the risk, come on, and a sunscreen, like, no. And then the raisin lemon myrtle toner, no, don't buy that, you guys. I mean, niacinamide is a dime a dozen. It's in pretty much everything right now. I mean, it's probably even in this tea I'm drinking. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't jump on on that. To me, niacinamide, fantastic ingredient, but I mean, there are tons of products with niacinamide. Yeah, I don't think this brand is worth it. Many of you are like, why are you even making this video? I have no interest in this. But I did get a lot of requests to review this brand our line or launch i don't know here's what i predict you guys i've been on youtube for a few years now and i you know i appreciate this kind of trend and interest here's the thing you'll forget about these products in four to six weeks and they'll be a thing of the past people it's not as though people forget about them but they move on to the next thing yeah they pretty much forget about them um it's, oftentimes i've seen on my channel where a brand will launch something new will come out i'll get a ton of requests to review it and sometimes i don't i just sit <laughs> and I, I just sit on it and I don't review it. And then the requests start going away after a while and new requests come in for something else. That, and, But ultimately the products are not that different from one another at the end of the day. So um, yeah, if you are on the fence still, you think that you might want it, give it four to six weeks and trust me, you'll, you'll, there's a good chance you'll forget about it you're gonna see more products coming out because this line is not gonna go away even if you you know people aren't that interested in it. They probably already have other products. They're just waiting to launch them. Um, I predict there'll be an eye cream and I predict that there'll be a retinol serum and, um, and they'll probably come out with a hyaluronic acid serum but I bet there won't be wipes. That I would be surprised to see. Wipes are a drugstore thing I have come to the conclusion. Um, these indie brands, they don't wanna be associated with wipes because, I mean, first of all, wipes, I mean, just the word alone, it makes you think of, well, yeah. Um, but yeah, wipes are largely a drugstore thing, but if you're like trying to pull at the heartstrings of those who care about the environment, you're not gonna come out with wipes. That, you know, the branding has already kind of alluded to their anti-wipe stance, just in the cleanser alone. So I would be surprised to see any kind of wipe. But there'll probably be an oil cleanser that will come out, which would be great. Um, they'll probably be maybe a, a makeup remover, or they'll, she probably already, they probably already have that in the makeup line, the Fenty makeup line. Mm, what else? There'll probably be some masks too, and yeah. Oh, and of course, trending ingredients. That's always important to stay on top of and pump out a new product accordingly, or multiple products. In fact, a subline. Right now, it's melon, which they they were on top of. Melon is having a moment right now, and in, in all skincare. Um, and it will continue to, to be there for a little while and then it will die out and some other new food will replace it. I'm trying to think of a food that hasn't had a moment in skincare. Cause artichoke, they, they wink in artichoke with the prebiotic like line of crap. Um, yeah, like what's a plant-based food? It has to be plant-based. You, you can't have a chicken line. Uh, Cause coffee's already had a moment. Maybe Gatorade, I don't know. <laughs> Oh wait, electrolytes have had a moment. That's right, the electrolyte facial water bomb. Boy, it must be exhausting being a skincare branding agency or whatever, or marketing agency. I imagine that there is like a subset of them that do these celebrity lines, like the Cindy Crawford Meaningful Beauty. It's always about appealing to a certain demographic that's going to form some kind of connection with the celebrity on the front of the package. Yeah, for the Cindy Crawford line, it's gonna be more towards the mature skin crowd um, with all the anti-aging claims and whatnot. Uh, and then, you know, with Rihanna, it's going to be a younger demographic. Do they have a jaded demographic? <laughs> what celebrity would that be? Anyways, guys, try to not fall for marketing. I mean, that is largely what all of this is. Not really anything that's useful to your skin or really to you. I mean, once you buy the products, you're not gonna, that that little connection is not gonna last. And, and 
you know, then there'll be some new line that comes out and these things will be forgotten. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.